Okay, so tonight we're going to start our last uh, unit of material before the STAR exam. So we're going to start with evolution. Um, so with evolution, we're going to be looking at a variety of topics. Okay, um, I do want to make a point uh, very clearly. We are not uh, debating as to whether evolution exists or not. Um, we are just presenting you with the information that is out there. Okay, and it's information that you need to have to be able to be successful both in class as well as in your um, on your STAR test. So we're going to start off our unit with uh, natural selection. Okay, so natural selection is sometimes uh, referred to as survival of the fittest. Okay, and so when we hear survival of the fittest, uh, this like I said, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about natural selection, and there are a couple of things that are essentially required for natural selection to be able to happen. Okay, so there's four things, four criteria that need to be, able, be met for natural selection to occur. First of all, there needs to be overproduction, and this happens with all species, okay, that every species is, go species is going to produce more individuals than are going to survive. They know that. Okay, it's difficult. Um, turtles are a very easy, common example to think about. Okay, uh, sea turtles, when they go and lay eggs, they lay hundreds of eggs at one time in the nest on the beach, knowing that out of those hundreds of eggs, just a few, like literally two, three, four of them are going to make it to maturity because they have to be able to successfully get back to the water and avoid predators there. Once they're in the water, they need to be able to act, they need to be able to get food and avoid predators to be able to reach maturity. So they lay tons and tons and tons of these eggs so they can assure that at least some of them will survive. Okay, so all of your species are going to produce um, more individuals than are able to reach maturity. Also, within each species, you're going to have variation. The individuals of the population are going to have some different traits, some different characteristics. Uh, this example here with these, um, what look like elk, okay? So we've got different colors, okay? So we've got some that are light colored, some that are darker colored, okay? Um, antlers could be varied within them, okay? Um, you can see, for instance, this dark one here, looks like it may be a male as well. Larger has that similar fur, okay? um, but its antlers are different. Uh, maybe the fur pattern in general is different, the amount of hair that they have. Okay? But there's variations within the population, just like there are within, hu within humans. Every single human is not exactly the same. Because of this variation, that's what allows some to survive and some not. Okay, so with our very with our population that is overproduced. Okay, if y'all remember we had our carrying capacity before. Remember the organisms would um, they have a certain kind of set popu set population that the resources can uh, sustain. And when they go above that, organisms start to die. When they go below it, they'll start reproducing again. Okay, so remember we had this carrying capacity. And so when these organisms are at carrying capacity. So when they're at carrying capacity and they're overproducing, okay, that's going to result in competition. And remember, when we have competition, okay, somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. And the variation that is within the species is what's going to determine who wins and who loses. Someone is going to be better suited for that environment. Okay? And so that's where the selection comes into play. Okay. Some individuals are going to survive longer. They're going to be better suited for whatever reason. In this instance, and this example here with these elk, uh, it appears that the darker colored ones are better suited for the environment, whether that's a camouflaging reason, whether it's they helps them keep warm because they attract um, more of the solar energy. For whatever that reason, for whatever the reason, that particular character at this point in time is good to have. And so as these organisms compete for one another, the darker colored ones are going to win. Okay? If they win, then they're going to reproduce. You'll notice as we go through and we talk about evolution, it's going to be all about who can reproduce, who can pass on their DNA. Because if you don't pass on your DNA, then evolutionary-wise, you're irrelevant. Okay? If you didn't pass on your DNA, then your genes don't stay in the gene pool, Okay, and you are not contributing to the population changing. Okay, so the goal is reproduction when it comes to evolution. 
So these organisms that are doing better, these dark colored ones, they're the ones that are reproducing. Well, if they're reproducing, then their DNA is what's staying in the gene pool. So over time, you'll see a shift where the population of elk, there'll be a lot more of these dark colored ones, okay, and that's when the adaptation is actually occurring. Okay, so adaptation occurs in a population. Okay, adaptation is not individual. Okay, it is absolutely not individual. Individuals cannot change. You cannot be born a light-colored deer or an elk, realize that it's better to be a dark-colored elk, become you know a few years old and change your hair to become now a dark-colored elk. Okay? It, adaptation ha happens within the population. Eventually, the entire population will change. And so um, the traits of the population now will re reflect this um, preferred characteristic. Let's look at two other examples of natural selection then, aside from these elk, these animals. Uh, so this first one here is insects, okay, and pesticide resistance, okay. Um, you've probably seen or, you know, heard some insects, you know, you can spray them with all the bug spray you want, and it's not going to kill them, okay. So uh, what happens with that, okay, it's not that the bug got sprayed with bug spray and was like, oh, this is bad, let's change so that I can be resistant. You had some bugs that were naturally resistant. So if you look at these leaves here, okay, here's our first generation of insects. And um, this red one just happens to naturally be resistant. So when this bug spray is sprayed on these insects, okay, the white ones start to die off. Okay, but the red one does not because it is naturally resistant. So that means that red allele is going to stay in the population. Okay, and so now, if you remember what an allele is, Remember our allele are our different versions of our, de of our genes? Remember you could have um, alleles for red hair, blonde hair, brown hair. The gene codes for hair color, the allele is what all the different varieties of hair color you could have. Okay, so in this instance we've got a couple of alleles here for red and white bugs. Okay, so next generation, okay, as that red one starts to reproduce, you see more and more of them in the population. So you spray more of this insecticide on them. Okay? White ones again start to die off. Red ones, though, are surviving. So eventually, you will see the population evolve or the population shift to have more of, more of these red insects as opposed to the white insects. Because at this point in time, it is beneficial to be um, resistant to that insecticide. Okay, to um, be able to resist that. Uh, the other example we have down here on the bottom is antibiotic resistance. Some of you guys may have heard of this in, um, uh, it's more common in hospital settings to have an antibiotic uh, resistant strain of bacteria. Um, that's what MRSA, uh, those of you that are athletes, um, and you may hear about uh, MRSA infections or uh, staph infections, you know, that can be um, resistant to uh, medicine. That's what um, MRSA is, uh, methicillin, which is an antibiotic resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Okay, so just a staph infection that you can't get rid of taking any antibiotics. So what you can see here is you've got some smears of bacteria on this Petri dish. Okay, and so the discs that are soaked in antibiotics, okay, so you don't have any bacterial growth here, none here, none here, but there is um, bacterial growth there because that bacteria is, again, naturally resistant. They had to be born with that resistance. They didn't decide that they didn't want to die today so that they changed their genes, okay. There was variety in the population and some of them were able to, were naturally resistant. So then they started reproducing more. So now that's the DNA that's being passed on, the one that is naturally resistant. Okay, um, think about people in general. You know, your friend could get a bad cough, you know, or a bad cold. It's your friends you spend all the time with. So there's no way you shouldn't get this cold, but you don't because you are naturally resistant to this cold. Okay, so variety in the population is very important for evolution. It's what allows populations um, to survive when their environment changes. 
So where does this variation come from? Because that's, like I said, that's key for evolution to be able to happen. Okay, so you can see uh, up here in these clam uh, these shells here, uh, you can see how they have variation in their coloring and banding pattern. Uh, these finches here that we'll talk a lot about when we talk about speciation, okay, they have uh, variation within their beak size, which allows them to eat different um, food. So they have can have access to different food sources, so they don't have depending upon which island they live on and what's available for them. Okay, but these variations are going to come from, like we said before, different alleles. Remember, again, our alleles are different versions of the same gene. Okay, and so these different alleles are what allow for the variation within the population. And these new alleles can come about through mutations. Okay, uh, remember we talked about mutations before, when we talked about DNA. Remember, not all mutations are bad. Remember, you had some mutations that you didn't even know that you had. Okay, and some mutations could actually be a good thing. Okay, so they may allow for um, a different trait or characteristic to show up, which if the environment changes, turns out to be a beneficial trait or char characteristic. So um, these alleles, like I said, the alleles are created through mutations. And remember, it has to be a mutation that occurs in a gamete to be able to be passed on. Remember, if you have a mutation that causes skin cancer when you're 65, that does not mean that your children are going to develop that same mutation and get skin cancer. Okay, that was not in the gametes that, you know, created your children. So our next step then would be able, would be to uh, start to quantify um, this. We can quantify evolution. We can assign it a number, assign a value, and determine whether evolution is happening or not based on that value. And that'll be one of our upcoming lessons, will be exactly how we're going to quantify that. But um, some of the things we'll need to be able to, to know to do that okay, is we will be calculating our what's called our allele frequency. Okay, so remember our allele is the different variations, and frequency is just going to be how often something occurs. So if our allele frequency is going to be how often the allele shows up in the population. So for example here uh, with these bugs, okay, so you can see these birds seem to prefer the green bugs. Okay, and along the way there was the random mutation here that caused some of the bugs to have brown portions. Well the brown portions allow them to camouflage better. And so over time you start to see a shift there. Okay, we could quantify that allele frequency. Okay, in early on here, okay, we would have we could be able to uh, determine how often the allele for brown and how often the allele for green shows up in the population, and then we could recalculate that again later to see the allele frequency for the brown allele again and the allele frequency for the green allele. Okay, and we could compare the two, and if that has changed, that would let us know that evolution is occurring. So you can see the allele frequency shifting again here. Okay, again, you could calculate the allele frequency here for the white and the gray. And one of the things we need to keep in mind is again going back to our genetics. We need to be sure, because when we go to calculate this, that's going to be one of the things that will frustrate, frustrate y'all the most, is going to be that we are very, very comfortable between our differences of a phenotype a genotype, that's an N, a genotype, a phenotype versus an allele. Okay, remember a genotype is going to consist of two alleles. Remember, everybody has two alleles. Um, they have one from mom, one from dad. So for instance, that would be a genotype. Okay, both alleles make up the genotype. Remember, our phenotype then is going to be our physical appearance, what is actually uh, produced from that genotype. But remember, our phenotype is dependent upon the genotype, right? What it says here, this combination of alleles says what we're going to look like here. Okay? And then remember, the allele is going to just be one okay, copy of the gene. And it's going to be our different versions of that one copy. For instance, in the genotype that I have up here, okay, in that particular genotype, okay, I have two alleles right there, and they're two different alleles. 
Okay, a big B is one allele and a little b is another allele and it's different. Okay, so our genotype are the two alleles combined which will dictate our phenotype and the allele are those